Then I got orders. And my orders were, in fact, it was pretty good, was to go to a patrol bomber squadron uh, heading for the Pacific. But they were at that time going on a shakedown cruise in, the, in Charleston, South Carolina. So we went, I spent two months on the shakedown cruise with them, which was very active. I mean, we had to do all sorts of things. The interesting thing about that shakedown cruise was that on the PBMs, the radar antenna was above and just behind the cockpit. And somebody had warned some of these pilots, I'd watch out those microwaves uh, can sterilize you. <laughs> and they didn't want to be sterilized. So they didn't want to use the radar. <laughs> so it was a I had to do a selling job to convince them that this is not the case. Eventually, the way I did it was we'd go out on some gunnery or exercise out in the Atlantic Ocean, and we were completely out of sight of land. Time to uh, get out, turn around, come home. Uh, and I could see that the pilot, I didn't have the radar on. It was, it was off. And he was kind of fishing around his navigation to try to find his way back to Charleston. Well, Charleston had what was known as a radar beacon. So I turned it on and I uh, finally went on the intercom with the pilot and said, well, um, Captain, if you want to get to Charleston the fastest way, since right now you're about 10 degrees off course, but uh, if you turn 10 degrees to the, to the south, you'll make it direct. And it's so many miles away. Silence. Gagarin, how do you know? He says, well, I've got the Charleston beacon on radar. Tells me exactly where that is. Oh, OK. <laughs> well. That alone sold them the idea of how to use radar. So they didn't have to go fishing around to try to remember where they were. <laughs> and I was never asked that question afterwards. I, in fact, it was the opposite. So they finished fooling around and says, all right, Gagarin, give us a bearing home. <laughs> so anyway, that got me started. And we were a great gang of, you know, the whole Squadron was really got to be a, a unit. We made a trip to Key West, Florida, for example, uh, for also more anti sub training. One of the things was how to use the radar to find a periscope. To make it look like a periscope, they had a sunken ship in the harbor that happened to sink sometime prior with one of these air ducts sticking out. And this was all, you had to find that thing. You, you were flying around and see if you could find it on radar. Well, I thought I had found it. I was operating radar and telling the guy, the pilot directions. Finally, he says, Garen, look out the window, see what you're chasing. And I looked out, I was chasing a blimp that was doing the same thing. <laughs> so, so you could tell you the radar was not very sophisticated in those days. Anyway, we came back, and in Charleston, where we did all our training, was a sort of a newly built base next to the Charleston Navy Yard, and they didn't have an officers club. And people were kind of thirsty because they came back from flying, and they wanted to have an officers club. And the question is, how do you stock it? And during wartime, whiskey was hard to find in the United States. So uh, they diverted two planes to Cuba, uh, from Key West to Charleston via Cuba, and uh, collected all the cash they could from us uh, to buy. And they uh, came back a day later from Cuba to Charleston and quietly unloaded the goodies. And that's how we started the officers club. <laughs> It was 
little Cuban contraband coming into the States. 